Imagine you're applying for a job at your dream 3D company and they ask you, hey, what about them 3D pipes? Can you just, you know, show me a few? So you're showing them your 3D models and everything goes well until... Today I'll share how I've managed to avoid such an embarrassment using just the bare bones blender with no add-ins. Can you imagine that? I'm starting with the easiest of three models. Let's add a circle and change the vertices to 24. Now let's extrude it, duplicate it by pressing Shift D, R to rotate by 90 degrees, Shift D again and R by 90 degrees again in the top view. Now let's move one of the cylinders and we need to create all those vertices here in the joint points. So I'm gonna select one of the objects, Boolean, but we use the union here. Now with the eyedropper tool, let's select one of the cylinders, apply the modifier and do exactly the same with the another cylinder. So I'm gonna hide this object, delete those two cylinders, press Alt-H to unhide. So now we have to clean up this mess here. I found a cool way to do it. Three of the circles are selected. We just need to select this one, press the H key to hide everything. And with this mess left, I'm gonna select all by pressing A key, now X and delete only faces. Not faces, but only faces. Let's press Alt H to unhide the rest of the geometry. And to clean this up, let's select one of the vertices, Shift G, amount of adjacent faces. Now we have all those loose vertices selected. Let's delete them. And we need to repeat the same steps for those loose edges here. So I'm going to select one, shift G, amount of faces around an edge. Let's delete those. And now we have a perfect base shape to start working with. Throughout this video, I'll be using the good old, quite often forgotten subdivision modeling technique, which basically means two things. First, when I change the shading of my geometry to smooth, this doesn't happen. And when I apply a subdivision surface modifier, this doesn't happen. So with this object, the solution is quite simple. We enter the edit mode, disable the subdivision surface modifier. And now I just press Ctrl R at the edge loop and slide it till the end. And now I just push it back a little bit. Now let's do the same here. And I'm just gonna keep this side untouched. So now when I exit the edit mode, you can see the difference. So this extra edge loop, when I press Ctrl R, you can see how it affects the geometry. I always need to move it back. Don't do stuff like this because you're gonna get killed by somebody in the professional environment, of course. And now, or in Minecraft. And now I'm gonna move this extra edge here. And here in the back, the problem, we didn't add the extra edge loop that would prevent us from having those shading issues. So the way to fix it is simply adding an extra edge loop here by using the knife tool. I should have actually done that before I've added those edge loops. If you make the same mistake, fear not, just add three extra edge loops here and this already fixes the entire geometry. So to have an actual pipe, we still need to add some thickness to it. The easiest way is selecting everything, pressing Ctrl F and choosing the Solidify Faces tool. However, I'm going to show you a little trick. As soon as you add it, you can see the subdivision surface modifier is rounding the endings of our pipe, which can be fixed, of course, by adding the edge loops like this. But now you also have to do it on the inside. So let's avoid the unnecessary work. And before you apply the Solidify Faces, just add the edge loops before that. The way I like to do this on the edges of the model is adding this extra support loop here. So this way I'm sure both the geometry and shading of my model will stay perfect every single time. All I have to do is applying the solidify faces again, but to make the model absolutely perfect so you can show it to anyone. You need to add three edge loops here and the way I do it is always deleting the middle one. If you exit the edit mode, you can see this area is also getting a bit rounded. So unless this is the effect you want to achieve, you can keep it. But I always add those extra edge loops so it looks pristine. What's also amazing, when you look inside the model, we have all those pretty shapes preserved. So if you show it to someone, you know, 3D Mesh tells a lot about 
a human being. If it's done right on the inside as well, everyone will respect you. Now, this second example is actually way harder than you think. And before you go into comments and write how stupid my method is, go ahead and try it because what we are doing here is will be actually... Before we begin, I have a little confession to make. Turns out with those Boolean objects, you can actually go ahead and delete the faces. This is my 3D artist excuse, but I really didn't know that. However, to my defense, if you do it this way, you can't add edge loops here. And that's because you need to remove the doubled vertices. Select everything with A key, press M and choose by distance. Hey, you know two methods now. I will now add two edge loops next to each other and close to the main edge here and I'm gonna delete actually half of this model and use the mirror modifier because we will have to do certain adjustments on both sides so let's just save ourselves some work and now in the side view I will select this edge loop deselect the corner vertex press ctrl e and choose the bridge edge loops option here open up this window here add one more segment this new segment corresponds to the main edge here if we add two more segments they will be corresponding to those edge loops you can use this smoothness slider to fix the model and what we want to do now is pressing the k using the knife tool and extending those edge loops what we have to do now is filling those faces. So I'm selecting the pairs of edges and pressing the F key to do it very quickly. Now we add two more edge loops, offset them a little bit further from the center. And we also need to delete these edge loops. You can see we now have pairs of triangles here. So I'm just selecting them and pressing F to convert them to quads. And I have to remove those two vertices by merging them into the last one. So I'm pressing M and merge at the last. Now you can see we have two more triangles here and here and a quad that we can create here. Now this model is basically done. However, I need to add a little bit more curvature to this edge loop we have in here. So I'm just selecting the individual vertices, pressing G twice and aligning them along those main edges. Be sure to move those vertices along those edges, not like that. However, the most important vertex is this one in the end. I'm just going to pull it further from the center and those two vertices, these are the only ones you can actually move like that but only slightly you just want to make it smoother and this usually fixes absolutely all the shading issues so press ctrl 2 in the object mode to apply subdivision surface modifier change shading to smooth and come on man tell me if you ever got a better and cleaner result than that especially when you consider we have the 90 degree angle in here i really tried many ways and wasn't able to come up with anything better so if you know the way leave it in the comments i would really like to try it out. Now the last object are three pipes joined under the 90 degree angle and it's something I'm a little bit afraid of posting the way. <laughs> I solved this, it's quite primitive, quite unintuitive. So if you know a better way, feel totally free to roast me in the comments because I've tested a few methods and I'm really curious how would you guys do it. So we already have the base geometry in place and I'm gonna add a UV sphere. So now I need to adjust it to our cylinders, our pipes. And what we want to do is using this corner for every single corner of our geometry. So I'm just gonna enter the edit mode, press C and select those faces P to separate them and I'm gonna delete the rest, duplicate and rotate within the X axis by 90 degrees and now by Z axis by 90 degrees. Now I'm gonna copy it again, rotate in Y axis and in the X axis by 90 degrees. And now we have to join those three parts together. Enter the edit mode, select everything and remove doubles. What we have to do right now is merging these vertices at center and what's primitive about this method I guess you can already see, but what's unintuitive, first we have to delete these vertices. What's unintuitive is that the shape is completely without symmetry, but it works. I don't know what to tell you. It gives me the best result every single time. So now you can see I've reduced all of the vertices and now I'm going to create triangles here. I'm going to select these edges right click and subdivide them. I'm gonna now select all those vertices in the middle and join them at center. Now I have to select this mesh, join them by pressing Ctrl J, enter the edit mode, select everything, remove doubles and Shift N 
to flip the normals. So let's preview the model. I'm going to apply Shade Smooth and you can already see it looks, in my opinion, perfect, right? We have those edges here, but we will remove them by adding the edge loops, sliding them to the limit and offsetting. So those squares are more or less the same size as those here in the corner. I'm going to repeat it everywhere. And this already is a usable model, in my opinion, because we can apply subdivision surface modifier. And you can see here we have absolutely no shading errors, which I don't honestly get how it works, especially because the mesh looks like this. What if I want to add sharpness to those corners? Actually, with this method, it's not that much of a problem. So let's add extra edge loops in all those areas and when we rotate back here you can see of course we have those extra edges they don't even yeah destroy the shading that much but i would normally move everything a little bit again extremely primitive but it works i select all those edges gg slide them hide them then select these edges gg and i move them kind of to this vertex unhide everything, repeat everywhere else. And there you have it. I don't know how it works. I don't know why it works, but it looks beautiful. And if you want to learn how to optimize this hellish 3D model, check out the video on the screen. And if you want to download the models created in this video, check out the link in the video description.